Alrighty, so today I'm going to do a, a long overdue video. Well, first off, we've got the yard totally mink proofed. So I've showed you that in the past, how we went along the edges and uh, buried some fence as well as uh, put up some, some uh, granite pieces to make it so the mink can't dig under the fence. So let's show you some of the other, we finished that project finally. So let's show you some of the other things we've been working on. Okay, so this is uh, one of the updates we've got to mink land. And it's obviously a pretty significant update. We now have our barn in, which is great because obviously it gives us a place for, for shelter. Um, but honestly, one of the huge advantages is the fact that uh, we have more privacy. You remember the back neighbors on the back fence, uh, they have nothing to look at but our backyard. And that was always kind of an annoyance. So now with the barn in, um, we have a lot more privacy. But that's obviously only one of the reasons we got it. That was a small reason, in fact. The bigger reason is obviously to use it for the mink. So let's, uh, we're still working on mink land. We've got a lot of improvements left to make, um, but let's show you what we're using the barn for now and, and some of the setup we have for the mink. So since we've got uh, all the baby mink are growing up and we've got the yard mink proofed, we can let them run around. Hey, Axel. Uh, this is our little Axel boy, the one we bottle raised. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong, this is Saber. Yeah. Yeah, this is Saber. Oh, here's Axel. These are our two boys that we bottle raised, Axel and Saber. And they're uh, quite a bit more friendly than the rest of the bunch, as I'm sure you can guess, since we bottle raised them. But um, they're running around with the, with the wild crew. And um, we've got it set up, a little play area for them here. And you see, we've got some pipes set up that they can run through, a little pallet they can climb around and climb under. And then we set up this dog kennel. The mink can easily go through the, the space in the, in the chain link, but we can lock it up so that my little girls don't get in here when we're not around to supervise them. And you know, ha obviously a drowning hazard having open water. So we've got this all locked up safely so the little girls can't get in it. And, um, but the mink can get in and out all they want. And then they can come play in this little kitty pool we have set up. And these little floating uh, bottles are just for toys. They just chew on them and kick them around the pool and stuff. Just little toys. And uh, we got the boards. You wonder what these weird boards are. It gives them a plat higher platform so it's easier to get in and out of the pool. It's not bad now. They're old and they're getting more mature and athletic. But when they were little, it was a little more difficult to get in and out. And then more importantly, it also gives them something to hide under so they they like the place it's more secure uh they're more comfortable playing around here because they've got a little place to dip under little guy oh baby be nice be nice oh hey how are you you're a saber you being a good boy <laughs> you being a good boy oh there's a good boy there's axel oh good boys and these guys are obviously a lot more friendly with us the other guys will come check us out um they're not necessarily scared of people um, and they're, they're pretty curious. I mean, you see this little, little girl here, she's coming to check us out. Um, Axel and Saber, they're, they'll actually follow us around and play with us um, more than the other mink would. Yeah, they're almost 12 weeks old. Okay, so, the, so these guys are almost 12 weeks old and all these babies are born uh, roughly a week apart. So they're right around 12 weeks old. Hey, don't bite my ear. Uh, they're right around 12 weeks old and um, some a little older than 12, some a little under 12. And they're growing up fast. They've all got their adult teeth now and they've had them for a couple weeks. So pretty soon here we'll do a video showing uh, Axel and Saber specifically and kind of what they're up to as far as development and uh, training but we'll, we'll reserve that for another video for sake of time.
So now, um, we don't let them run loose um, unsupervised indefinitely, so they're not loose 24-7. The baby mink are loose for several hours in the morning and several hours in the evening. And then during the middle of the day and the middle of the night when I'm busy or asleep, they're locked away. And I'll show you where we're putting them um, while they're not out and about running around. So this is our temporary mink enclosure. Right now we're gonna be using it for uh, all the baby mink while we're building the bigger enclosures. And then eventually we're gonna have this be our chicken coop. So the plan for this for next spring is like I said, to have that back area be where we lock the chickens and then we're gonna grow a garden along here. And uh, we'll have the option to turn the chickens into the garden and lock them out of the garden as we please. So that way the chickens don't have full run of the garden and we'll destroy certain crops. Um, but we can turn them loose in here maybe for a couple hours to eat some bugs, uh, you know, supervised as long as they're not harming the garden. So that'll be the plan for next year, but for now we're just leaving the whole thing as a chicken run and the other section as the, the baby mink enclosure. So you see the mink can smell the meat. So I've got it all chopped up, ready to go. So they're all trying to climb me and uh, get the meat. So we better get out, uh, go put it in the pen before they, they climb up here. Come on, straggler. So this little mink is being raised by my buddy David, so she doesn't know the routine. So we're just teaching her the routine. There you go. So that's how we that's how we trained them initially. Just kind of teased them into the cage and then they learned all oh, this is where they eat. She doesn't know the routine yet. She knows the call. She knows the call means food. She can obviously smell the food. She doesn't quite get the routine that she's got to follow me to the cage. When we started out, I would just toss them some meat in the middle of the yard, call them to the me in a simple place. Then they got used to following me to a location where I dropped the food and eventually I worked all the way over to the cage where they just, now they know when I start calling them, they know where I'm headed and they follow me wherever I go. And um, I could do this other places. It doesn't have to be the cage. I could lead them over to the other corner of the yard. They just follow me. They know that call means it's time to eat. So I've learned that keeping the mink together has some advantages. Um, feeding them as a group like this creates a sense of competition. Um, just like in nature, they're not like one little baby by themselves with their mom. They're a whole litter of four or five, six babies, three babies at least living together and when the mom brings home a dead rat and drops it they all squabble over it and compete to eat that rat and then she brings home a fish or a frog and they all compete over that one fish or that one frog and so that's a natural way that mink have grown and developed and i've i started to notice with our babies that we separated the two little boys 
uh, Axel and Saber that they had a lack of urgency when it came to feeding time that all of the other baby mink actively had. That little competition creates a sense of urgency. And I realized, you know what, our baby mink that we were raising by hand, Axel and Saber, were missing out on that. And so we put them back in the group with all the rest of the babies so that they could actively compete. And it was kind of funny, even though there was two of them, I thought that two, I, I, I got an inclination on that sense of, ur of urgency created through competition last year. And that's why I raised Axel and Saber together, two of them. But it turns out that just two babies weren't enough. And like I said, in nature, having just two siblings together, it wouldn't be that common anyway. Usually it'd be a bigger litter of four or five, six babies. So uh, apparently those just having two babies for those particular mink wasn't enough competition. I needed to have a whole group of them to compete with to really build that sense of urgency. And since I've added them into the group, their, their urgency during feeding um, has increased and their their kind of drive has increased so it's really helped them to develop a, just like the other babies are developing having that little competition at feeding time and if you watch them it kind of looks like they're fighting and it's more of a tug of war and wrestling than it is actually like biting each other they don't from what I can tell when they're fighting they don't really grab each other they're too busy grabbing onto the meat so it might sound more violent than it is. It's really just more of a big tug of war rather than an actual like fight. Um, but that tug of war, obviously great exercise and great drive building. Um, if they sit around and kind of let the other mink eat, then they miss out and they know that. Um, now you might wonder, so what do I do if the mink don't come in? So they all understand the drill now. They understand it. There's no question in my mind that they know me calling them means food and they need to follow me to where I drop the food. So they know that drill, they know that routine. If a mink chooses not to come, which happens from time to time, they're too busy playing. They're like, eh, I don't really care about eating right now. I, I had a little more than I needed for breakfast. So dinner time comes, I'm not that hungry. If that happens, I leave the mink out. Um, I let the rest eat all of the meat and when they're done eating, I go and trap that mink that didn't come back and put him in the cage for the night and he loses, misses out on dinner. Um, that's happened a couple times, but it's usually only happens once for indiv individual mink. One time he gets lazy, he skips dinner or skips breakfast, man, he realizes that's not a fun thing. And just like in nature, if a mink got lazy and mama brought home a fish and they were too busy playing with a rock or a leaf or whatever, and his siblings ate it all, they learn, hey man, I better wake up, I better be on it. If he sees a duck and he delays and that duck flies away, boom, he doesn't eat for a while. If he sees a, a rat and that he delays on catching that rat and the rat gets away, he doesn't eat for a while. Just like in nature, that natural consequence of their actions, them learning, hey, I've gotta be on it. I can't waste my time playing with leaves and rocks and sticks and whatever they happen to be doing at the time. Um, I've gotta be on it. When it's dinner time, I come. And that urgency is very natural, something they learn in nature, and we're trying to duplicate here in this setup. So you've noticed we have chickens running around. You probably wonder, well, why aren't the mink catching the chickens? Well, the chickens have learned, because we started this when the mink were too little and slow to catch the chickens. The chickens have learned, hey, stay out of the way of the mink, or they grab us, because they have been caught. But several of the chickens have been caught. And whenever they get caught, I just quickly take a piece of meat and trade the mink off for the meat and let the chicken go. And the chickens learn, hey, you better, you know, be careful of the mink. The mink also, by seeing the chickens all the time and the chickens escaping most of the time, they kind of lose their interest in constantly chasing the chickens, which for me is good because I don't really need a mink that hunts chickens. You know, stay tuned, we'll keep you guys updated. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.